Hello, my name is Omar Rampersad. It is uh, Monday, April 30th, 2018 at uh, 3.14 p.m. in Toronto. So I posted a video just now in which um, I teared up. So I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to make a comment, uh, some comments on that. Uh, obviously, the tears caught me by surprise, and this is what happens when you're being harassed constantly for years. Um, there are triggers that are formed along the way, and uh, and uh, the harassers know what the triggers are because the triggers are something that they put in place. This is a deliberate act to hurt you to the point where it becomes a trigger. So um, so when you when you um, are constantly triggered using that that um, trigger point I'm going to say um, it builds up the um, the emotional the emotional reaction builds up inside of you. So this is the same thing with anger. And this is exactly what the perpetrators do in my case. Um, they will form a trigger and keep on pushing the button, as they say. So the, bu the button is pushed and pushed and pushed. This is a psychological crime. This is a crime. Whether the perpetrators believe this or not, it's a crime. That reaction that I had just now in that video that I posted is a result of a crime. So uh, that it's a psychological crime that was committed against me. So it was torture, basically, the result of being tortured, a crime. Uh, it's the same idea that uh, that um, the same... Um, the same approach, I should say, is taken throughout the targeting program. Exact, that exact approach, the exact process of forming a trigger by putting you through torture, by causing physical pain, but mostly it's emotional pain that the, the, um, the perpetrators are aiming to, um, to inflict. Because emotional pain is what causes you to split. Somebody you dearly, dearly love and trust betrays you in a horrific fashion while he is under mind control himself. So this is the whole, this is the, how the whole thing works. Um, never, ever is one person targeted in the entire society. If one person is targeted in a community, everybody in the community is targeted because everybody has to take part in the targeting. Therefore, everybody who's taken part in the targeting, targeting is being acted upon. So they are under some sort of mind control. They are in some sort of a program as well because the gangs and the criminals who are running the program understands that in order to target one person, they have to target a group of people, a whole lot of people. Not only the people who come in uh, direct contact with the person, but uh, people who can uh, just walk by and, uh, and say a, tr a trigger word and just walk away, perfect strangers. But Hearing the trigger word, somebody might just, I'll give you an example, somebody might just walk past you and um, a trigger might be um, a drop pencil, for instance. Anything could be a trigger, absolutely anything. And a person walks by you and somebody gives them five bucks, say walk pa past that person, drop a pencil. <laughs> the person may not have a clue as to why, doesn't care, it's a free five bucks. So he takes the five bucks or 10 bucks and he walks by and he drops the pencil. And then you have about 10 people do the same thing. And then you associate the pencil 
with uh, um, somebody who looks like a criminal, somebody who looks like, uh, you know, who, a mean looking person who you would be scared of and you'd be running away from the person because, you know, you'd be afraid. Uh, he looks like a criminal. So you associate the pencil with this uh, huge um, criminal looking person. And every time you see the person, uh, excuse me, every time, every time you see the pencil, you think of this um, really nasty, mean looking person that you're scared of and you feel the fear. The fear is replicated in you. This is what it means to form a trigger and keep hitting the button, pushing the button. So that fear accumulates inside of you. And then at some point it will, um, it will manifest in ways uh, um, that you may not um, expect. Um, you may get sick, physically sick, because uh, cortisol levels are high in your system. Um, you may get fearful of people who look like uh, the, um, the person you're scared of that's associated with this pencil. You may generalize that, that fear to people of the same color. Uh, you may generalize the fear, you may generalize the fear to the location, to uh, any other place that looks like the location in which you saw the person. So this is, uh, this is, this is uh, um, what I mean. Uh, the, um, the program doesn't only affect one person. And the reaction is not, is not uh, concentrated in the person. The reaction in the person is not concentrated only on the trigger itself but it, it's a generalized um, um, triggering uh, process. It can be, uh, the, the one single trigger can be associated with many other things other than that one single person or one single incident. Now, I didn't make that, I didn't say that very clearly. I hope um, you understand what I'm saying because it's difficult sometimes to describe exactly how emotions are, um, are um, are associated with cert with certain things and how it, it, emotions are triggered. Uh, it's a very complex it's a very complex process, uh, and for each person it's different. Um, so so this is how it's done. This is how targeting is done. Uh, the person is uh, is uh, harassed this way. One way, one method of harassment, psychological harassment. So what you saw in the video, um, I was talking and I was fine and uh, I hit on a topic that, um, that uh, meant that I had to talk about an incident that was for me a trigger. The experience was so excruciatingly psychologically painful and emotionally painful um, that it formed a permanent trigger. I'm now starting to realize it's a permanent trigger that I would have to deal with on an ongoing basis. Now, of course, you can deal with it, but I don't think um, you completely uh, get over a, an experience like that. Now, I mean, the pain of it is constantly going to be there, and the, and the permanent pain is a trigger. It's like hitting um, a scar, a wound, an open wound all the time. If somebody, um, if somebody mentions it or you have to talk about it. You're living with an open wound, basically. However, having said that, having said that, uh, it's not always the end of the world to have a, um, uh, such a wound um, inflicted on you. You can learn from it. You can use it as a motivator to get things done, to change things. Um, you can use it as a motivator to teach others. Um, and uh, eventually, eventually, it does heal. Uh, the, the, the saying that time heal all wounds, time heals all wounds, it's true. Because not only does it get, um, does it get, um, I'm not going to say less painful, but um, you, you, you seem to understand it. You, you seem to understand what caused it. You seem to understand why you reacted the way you did. Uh, you seem to understand the pain itself on a different level. So you get behind the pain. 
In other words, it's not it's not triggering you all the time. You get behind a trigger. You you desensitize the trigger along the way. However, the pain always is there. The pain of thinking that you asked somebody to turn off the heat to stop you from having a heart attack and all they had to do was switch the heat off and they did not, consciously did not. That's a very painful thing to think about and to live with, especially when some, the person had power over you and you didn't have any other way to get out of the situation that you're in. You were trapped, basically. Anyway, I'm going to stop there. It's been 10 minutes, so talk to you another time.